One of the problems with historic buildings, and one of the things the buildings suffer from in particular, is cement damage. And uh, that's a directly a result of the fact that the material is inappropriate to use for historic buildings. Now, if you consider we're working with building limes, which have an NHL, naturally hydronic lime, a neutronic strength of 2, 3.5 and 5. Those are the measurements of strength that you get with your limes. If we're dealing with cements, they start off at, in a, at uh, around about 45 to 65 um, strength, which means it's far too hard for a historic building. We're using building limes. This is um, probably NHL 2, I would have thought, and this is quite soft. You can break this apart, but you wouldn't be able to do that with a cement. And what happens is that lots of historic buildings tend to move. They may have a timber structure inside the building. Even Georgian buildings, which for all intents and purposes looks though they're built out of brick, um, have actually got timber stringers inside forming the inner carcass. And that the buildings will move and uh, contract with the, the lime as it takes up moisture and releases it. If you use cement, then it's far too hard and it traps moisture and this moisture then erodes the stone or the brick that it's attached to and uh, the building will suffer from delamination. Now cement was introduced by Smeaton, there was a competition put out to find a material that um, would be suitable for using on the Edison lighthouse because the lighthouse kept get washing away. So um, it was Smeaton who uh, found out that you could find particles of lime that had clay inside them and then from that he added other material like mica, silica, clay and then he produced a blast furnace by turning a blast furnace on its side to increase the temperature and he formed what we now know as the first cements and this was ideal for doing sea defences, lighthouses, uh, the London sewers for example because it was a fast setting material that anybody could use. You didn't need any particular skill, it set very hard, set very quick. Um, but now unfortunately we're suffering from that because it's an inappropriate material and it's far too hard for what we, what we need. It's just one of those things that has to be removed and replaced with lime. So here we are on the second lift of the scaffold in on the upper level of the gallery of Union Chapel and we're looking specifically at damage to the stonework around the windows and if we look at the window here we have a metal armature around the window and uh, condensation from water has been running down onto the top of the stone. This is a bath stone that's been um, dressed at this point here but it's failed because of the water content and possibly freezing uh, and expanding and blowing the top surface off of the stone. Unfortunately a lime repair could have been undertaken but it's been undertaken using cement which is an inappropriate material and all that will do is to trap the water underneath the cement. On the window behind me which we'll have a look at now the cement has been removed and you can see just how randomly it's been kind of ladled on. This has got a, a Newton strength of 65 Newtons which is far too strong for over sailing bath stone um, and this really should be undertaken with the lime repair but you can see the damage that's happened to the stone where it's just become extremely friable and uh, can just break away. The repair has been done here using a lime um, up against the, uh, the metal and there's been some lime put in here as a repair as well. So this can be repaired either by chopping this out and replacing it with bath stone um, as an insert or historically um, the SPAB Society for Protection of Ancient Buildings would have undertaken a tile repair at this point where you cut tiles, plain tiles, and you bed them in on a lime bed and then render it with a lime coat um, to get the same profile and then that's considered as an honest repair. But to use cement is a real mistake. What we have here is a really good example of cement damage. We have a metal band which has been inserted above the bricks which is rusted and expanded and then someone has decided to cover this up with cement and uh, you can see where the cement has damaged the profile of the bricks. This is all hollow, you can hear. 
So it means that water is getting in behind it where it's cracked through here and it's gone in and it's damaged the brick. So all of this, all this hollow section needs to come out and then the bricks need to be repaired. But it's a good example of, of the kind of damage that cement does to the, the bricks. It just pulls the face off.